The Sun and Moon anime series is known for many things, and one of those things is definitely not its movies, because, well, it had none. Starting in Sun and Moon, all of the movies took place in an alternate universe to the main series, so we never saw characters like Lana or Lily in the movies. While the movie I Choose You wasn't very amazing in my opinion, I do think Power of Us and even Coco were amazing movies, so I definitely think this was the right choice for Pokemon movies. But I have to wonder, what if they never made this choice? What if the three Sun and Moon movies were all Sun and Moon movies? Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I'm going to be rewriting every movie that took place during Sun and Moon to actually take place during Sun and Moon. So first up, we have the movie I Choose You, and while this is the first one I'm going to be going over in this video, it's actually the last one I thought of, just because I didn't know the best way to take this reboot concept and actually make it canon to Sun and Moon, but eventually I did think of a pretty good idea, so I'm going to share that with you guys now. So here's the premise for the movie. It's the school festival at the Pokemon school, and our classmates are tasked with putting on a play. But instead of putting on that weird Lily play they did in that one filler episode, they're making their own brand new play. But they don't know what to base it on. Ash then suggests to all of his classmates that they make a play about his Pokemon journey, and for some reason they all say yes. So that would all be like the first 20 minutes of the movie, but the next hour or so would just be this retelling of Ash's journey, but through this Pokemon School play. Because this is just a play put on by the Pokemon School kids, there are going to be some difference to the main series, just like in the original I Choose You. For one, all of Ash's classmates will be playing the characters. We'll have Lily as Ash, Mallow as Brock, and Lana as Misty. There would also be some plot changes to make it more exciting, just like the original I Choose You like a final battle at the end in the Pokemon League with Ash versus Gary. Alright, I know that might have been sort of a weird concept, but that's the best way I could think of to keep this whole reboot idea, but actually make it canon to Sun and Moon, so let me know what you think in the comments. However, we still have two more movies to go over, so let's get into those now. Next up, we have The Power of Us, and this is going to be much easier to turn into a Sun and Moon movie than the previous one, because this is actually a normal Pokemon movie, pretty much. You know, other than taking place in an alternate universe, there's no reboot, there's, there's no nothing, it's just kind of a typical Pokemon movie. For this movie, I'm going to keep the five anime original characters in the movie. However, instead of being helped by Ash, I'm going to have them all be helped out and developed by different Sun and Moon characters. Each Sun and Moon classmate will help out and develop one of the Power of Us original characters. So let me explain which character will develop which one now. First up we have Lily and Harriet. Now there's something that both of these characters have in common, and that's that they were both scared of Pokemon. So I think that Lily would be able to help Harriet realize why she was scared of Pokemon, or disliked them in her case, because both of their reasons for disliking Pokemon, or not being able to touch Pokemon, are related to trauma, so Lily would be able to help Harriet get over her trauma of her past by learning about Lily's and relating to each other. Next up is Lana and Callahan, and this might seem like a weird pair at first, but trust me, it all makes sense. So we know that Callahan's biggest weakness is that he's always lying. And what's Lana's catchphrase? So this. That's right, Lana is also known for constantly lying, but in her case, it's just a joke. She's just kidding. So she would be able to help Callahan realize that while he thinks his lying is good, it's actually a bad thing. There's a difference between good lying and bad lying, and Lana would be able to help him realize that. Next up would be Mallow and Margo, and I feel like this might be the biggest stretch of the video because there's not too much linking these together, mainly just because Margo is kind of known for being friends with a lot of wild Pokemon, including Zaraora, and Mallow's somewhat similar, being friends with the wild Shaman, and the wild Drampa from earlier in her life, so I think she could relate to Margo here. Also, Mallow's just very friendly, He's probably the friendliest of all the classmates, so if anyone's gonna help out the little girl who needs help, it would probably be Mallow. Again, this is maybe the biggest stretch of the video, but I think it could work. Next up would be Sophocles and Torin. Both are scientists. Sophocles is more of a programmer, while Torin works more in a lab, but they're they're both scientists, and I think they would relate to that. 
Torn's very shy. I wouldn't necessarily say Sophocles is the most outgoing person, but he's definitely not shy, so I think he would be able to help Torn out here. Finally is Kiawe and Risa, and I feel like in the original, Risa is the one who got the most help from Ash, and I feel like Kiawe is probably the most similar to Ash of all of the companions. He has that protagonist energy in a way, so I feel like he would be able to help Risa take her first steps as a Pokemon trainer more than anyone else here. But this one's also kind of a stretch. I, I need to have one person for each, so some of these aren't the best fits, but I do think each of these pairings would work, and I definitely think this movie would still be great with each classmate helping out some other character here. Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution. I, I had a hard time figuring out what to do with this movie because this is a retelling of movie one. But movie one is canon to the Kanto anime, not the Alolo one. So I was having a hard time figuring out what to do here. Considered maybe just remaking that movie, but instead of it being canon to Kanto, somehow it's canon to Alola, but in the end it just didn't work out, and I don't think there could be an Alola version of this movie. So instead I'm going to be making an entirely new concept for an Alola movie. First thought was to make a movie about Meltan, because every movie focuses around a mythical Pokemon, whether that be Marshadow or Zeraora, each of these movies does focus around some sort of mythical Pokemon, so that's why my first thought was Meltan, but Meltan has such a big role in the main anime that I see no way it can work as a Pokemon in this movie. So then I thought about the older movies Lucario and the Mystery Mew and Zoroark and the Master of Illusions. Now these movies are special because while there are mythical Pokemon in them being Mew and Celebi, they mainly focus about Pokemon from the next generation being Lucario and Zoroark. So for this brand new movie I'm going to be making, it's going to be similar to those two older movies, focusing on a Gen 8 Pokemon and then a mythical Pokemon with a smaller role. So I went on Twitter, at AleximoYT, you should follow me, and I asked you guys who is the Zoroark or Lucario of Generation 8, and I got a couple replies, and you guys mainly told me that it would be Toxtricity. However, I don't really think Toxtricity would fit in this movie, and the reason why is because these past movies, the Zoroark and Lucario ones, Zoroark and Lucario had some way of communicating with our main characters via telepathy or some other mean. And I don't think Toxtricity, I, I can't make a way for Toxtricity to communicate like that. Toxtricity isn't a Pokemon with any sort of psychic abilities, no aura, no, nothing. So I can't really make a way for it to speak with telepathy to our main characters. So I think the best Gen 8 Pokemon for this movie would be Orbeetle. Now, it's a mysterious Pokemon that we didn't know from any trailers or anything. Uh, for the games, so it would be a mystery. It's a psychic type, so it could communicate via telepathy if it needed to, which I, I need it to. And overall, it's a very cool looking Pokemon, and I think it could fit this role of the Zoroark or Lucario of Generation 8. Alright, now we need to choose the mythical for this movie, and I already ruled out Meltan, so the first thought I had was maybe like Jirachi, because the previous two had Mew and Celebi, which are Gen 1 and 2. So maybe the Gen 3 Jirachi, but then I realized something. The reason Mew and Celebi were in their movies before was because they came out to promote the remakes. Now let me explain. Mew was in Lucario and the Mystery of Mew, which came out in Gen 3, which came out near the time of Fire Red and Leaf Green, right? Then Celebi was in Zoroark and Master of Illusions, which came out in Gen 4, which came out near the time of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. These mythicals were there to promote those remakes. Because of this, we're going to need to use Mew as our mythical, because that'll promote Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which will be coming out around the time of this movie. Alright, so what would the plot of this movie be? Now, I'm not the best at writing movies, well, I've never done it before, so let's see if I can make something that at least makes somewhat sense. Ash and his friends would be in class when Sophocles would tell Ash a rumor that there are some mysterious psychic readings coming from the Hyena Desert, and Sophocles theorizes that there could be a psychic type Z crystal there and they should all go and investigate. So our group decides to go on a field trip to Hyena Desert to see what's over there. When they reach the desert, they would be confronted by Orbeetle who would start attacking them, thinking they were some sort of intruders. 
and all of our heroes would have to fight, but eventually make Orbeetle realize that they're actually good and have no intention of harming it. Orbeetle used its telepathy to explain to our heroes that there are Pokemon Hunters there and they are after Mew. Orbeetle actually thought our heroes were Pokemon Hunters at first, but now knows that's not the truth. Our protagonists all decide that Mew does not deserve to be hurt, and they all decide to go and defeat the Pokemon Hunters to help and free Mew. Fight the Hunters and are able to do pretty good damage and take out most of their Pokemon, but in the time that took them to do that, the Hunters were able to take Mew, and they used some special high-tech machine to make Mew use its Z-move without any Z-crystals or anything. No bond between trainer and Pokemon, just forcing Mew to use its Z-move, and that would take out all of our protagonists' Pokemon. It would be down to just Orbeetle, and Orbeetle would have to take down the rest of the Hunters and free Mew. To do this, Orbeetle would then Gigantamax, and even though there is no Dynamax in Alola, in the Genesect movie, Mewtwo was able to Mega Evolve no trainer, so I think since this is a movie, we can allow it. So Orbeetle would Gigantamax, take out all the Hunters, save Mew, and everyone would be happy, and Mew and Orbeetle would leave and do their own thing, and our heroes would head back to the Pokemon school. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was really my first time ever writing movies, so I hope I did a decent job. Please tell me in the comments what you thought, and make your own movies in there. I would love to hear what you have to say. I'm sure they would be way better than mine. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you're interested, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.